If you possess a unique strength, it must be used for good. From the chapter, The Doors of Perception. GWSN with weird quote. Did they like invent? Did they, they like invent their own Bible or something? Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. I remember. I don't remember what the quote was from the first music video, but I remember I used it for the podcast, and so I used this one because I don't know what the doors of perception are, but they're quoting it in their music video. They're giving Luna a run for their money with like the weirdness of their yeah, basically. like weird broken English. <laughs> Yep. Uh, what's up, everyone? This is Nate from Truly Daybuck with another episode of the Daybuck cast. This is episode 113. Um, and as you can see, Jacob is once again not with us. Uh, he was supposed to be on this episode, but um, he's still having trouble figuring out a good way to record while he's in Korea uh, because he has like five roommates and so it's loud in his dorm and... And they party and, till five in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just, that's what happens when you study abroad in Seoul. I, I understand. Um, <laughs> I was there too. Um, but as always, I'm joined by Andrew, who usually has three things. Number one, this is a, this is a very weird thing of mine. Um, are you familiar with a rapper named Lil Uzi Vert by any chance? No. Never okay. heard of that. Name okay. Ever. So, supposedly, okay, Lil Uzi Vert, like, kind of a big name over the past couple of years, supposedly is a big fan of G Friend. Like, he went on, I'm playing a video right now of he's on Instagram Live, just like going on like a nonstop rant about like he doesn't care if everyone thinks that they're plastic or they're fake or it's too girly. He's like K pop. Apparently, he has like a G Friend tattoo somewhere as well. Like, so he is 100% confirmed buddy status. Lil Uzi Vert. That is incredible. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I how? I mean, it's crazy. Like the amount of people that actually find like in, that are like hardcore like hip hop rappers that are yeah. like secret K pop stands because freaking you know um Takashi Six Nine like he's in jail. Oh, he's going to jail. But um apparently he knows he knows what K pop is because he tried to like uh he tried to like steal a beat from like. YG or some type of like something like from YG I remember oh, really? it was involved yeah so a lot of a lot of like hardcore hip hop rappers know about K-pop uh, despite not being or not, despite not appearing to even know anything about something like that so just a very interesting sort of tidbit to start off with uh, uh, hmm. number two yesterday I went through the or not yesterday last week I went through the fight of my life just to secure our tickets to the Studio Ghibli Museum in Tokyo. Um, they were pretty hard to get, but it's going to be really worth it. I know uh, Umu's probably going to want us to bring something back because she, her whole life revolves around <laughs> Studio Ghibli. So I'm super excited. Okay. Okay. I, ne I need to cut you off. I'm looking at this guy's U Wikipedia page and apparently he's a Satanist. <laughs> Wait, what? Woods has been accused of being a Satanist, originally by battle rapper Daylight, who claimed that Woods worshipped Satan. Woods has been said to be inspired by Marilyn Manson's worship and support of Satan, <laughs> who he called his biggest inspiration. In July 2018, Woods told a crowd of fans that they were going to hell with him. <laughs> what the hell? So he's a Satanist buddy. <laughs> he's a Satanist buddy. That is... Yes. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> like Jesus I don't know Christ. what even sp I don't know even what spurred on him like ranting about like G friend and K-pop. It's like the randomest thing. Everyone in everyone in like the the live chatter just like what is he even talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, okay. That's... Sorry to cut you off, but no, I but no, that's hilarious. That, that is hilarious. That is the hilarious. Satanist buddy in the world. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, Imagine they end up like imagine like freaking he uh G friend goes to like South by Southwest or something and he's at the same venue and he's just like in the front like straight up like light stick and everything. <laughs> Apparently his company took his Instagram access away because he promoted Satanism too much on social media. <laughs> well, at least he's putting at least he's promoting K-pop instead of Satanism now. I mean, like that's that, that's. That's an improvement, you have to say. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to the Studio Ghibli Museum. Uh, I just YOLO bought, like, all of the Blu-rays because I haven't watched a Ghibli movie in, like, a decade. <laughs> I already had all the Blu-rays, but I've never watched any of them. Oh, my so God. So <laughs> I need to do that. Yeah, I'm going to go in order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I plan on to. 
And uh, number three, arguably be the most important uh, news of the week, KCON New York is now in July, uh, the weekend, uh, July 4th weekend of 6th and 7th in Madison Square Garden and at Javits Center. So, number one, this is in New York City, like actual KCON New York is actually taking place in New York. Like for yeah, once. so now we can't complain every time they say, what's up, New York? Oh, God. <laughs> it'll be yeah, true not, now. Yeah, it'll be true. So uh, this is a big step up for KCON. Um, them being able to secure l- uh, the garden means there must be some big people coming. Like, you you don't get a garden date unless you have big artists coming. Because, I mean, if they're just going to get new... I mean, we'll go a- deeper into it once we do our usual KCON predictions episode. But um, you... There has to be someone big coming if if they if yeah, they definitely. secured Matt like because there hasn't been a Madison Square Garden K-pop concert since um, SM Town in 2011, like almost that's like eight oh close to eight years ago. So yeah, like this is big news. Uh, we'll see how it ends up. We, Jake, well, by how it being in July, there's a chance that Jacob could go now because before if it was like the last week of. June, he wouldn't have been able to go. The thing is, though, it's just going to be a pain in the ass for everyone to travel because it's July 4th weekend. So, literally, yeah. everyone's going to. Tra- you already bought your ticket, right? Or you already got your yeah, ticket? Yeah, and it, I got my flight, and it was just, it was pretty similar f- price because I booked it so early, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. So, if you're planning on coming to KCON, I mean, we're all going to be there, or I'm going to be there at least. Um, Nate will as well. Uh, definitely book early. Uh, hopefully, you can get tickets one <laughs> to. To um, well, five to. We're actually gonna try and get a panel. Um, I'm actually pretty serious about maybe we can get a panel for maybe something like for a produce X 101. Well, because we do produce cast, uh, maybe we can do something related to that, or maybe we can do like a Deba cast live sort of thing. Maybe just try to make it appeal to people who don't necessarily listen to the uh, podcast, just a general topic sort of thing. So if you're looking, if you're excited about that, if you want us to do a panel, um, you just let us know your ideas. We're definitely open to suggestions. Maybe. Uh, once we can get into contact with whoever we have to get into contact with, because we have, I have all our friends are like, oh, we know how to, or we're, they're all going to be on panels and everything. We just have to figure out how to get one of our own. So hopefully, hopefully I'm, I'm really crossing my fingers. I think that would, that that'd be huge for us if we can get a cake on panel. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. our three things. Uh, minor notes just to add. I mean, I'm probably going to play a, like a pre thing in front of this, but the Truly Day Box server is doing its first annual NCAA March Madness bracket group tournament thing. So they just literally were recording in this on Sunday. They just announced the uh, 68 teams that are going to be in the tournament. So uh, I think uh, we're doing K-pop, um, K-pop Idol March Madness. So I thought we might as well just do like basketball March Madness. So if you're interested in joining, you're, uh, please join our Discord if you're not already a member. It's mucho lit. Uh, the password will be... The password for the group will be in the Discord, so you can enter and pick out your whoever you think is gonna win. I mean, you don't have to know anything about basketball, literally. Like, you know what the you know what the odds are of predicting a perfect bracket in uh, the NCAA tournament? One in yeah, nine. It's like lottery. One in nine point two quintillion, quintillion. Like, there's nothing that it, there's like no like actual like thing that exists that's quintillion. So, like, literally, you could just. Uh, you could just my dad just flips a coin every year. You could just like pick which mascot's cuter or something like that. Like all of it works. All of it you can probably do better than me. So I'll leave all that in the description below. Again, join our Discord to get the password to be able to enter the group and good luck. Because I'm probably not going to do that well. <laughs> Jacob did better than me last year. <laughs> did he? Yeah, no, he he predicted like there hasn't there was never a 16 seed that beat a one seed and freaking lo and behold Jacob's the one he picks the where he. He got that pick and like literally ruined everyone else's brackets. So, hmm. what do I know? <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. And as always, uh, if you like the podcast, like, subscribe, share, review us on iTunes. Um. Join the Discord, of course. That's where you can hang out with us, talk with us, hang out with uh, an awesome group of people, and do crazy stuff like song ratings and idol visual 
um, March Madness brackets. And, and begging bots stuff. to give us money. I guess also <laughs> playing weird games on bots and trying to steal money from people. And Why did you try to steal like, money from me? I don't know. Egg kept stealing from me and I kept stealing from him and it kept failing and I had to pay money every time I flew, fail at stealing. And he kept succeeding at stealing from me. It wasn't fair. Oh, he has, no. he has the most money on the server. Why? It's not fair. Okay. So I'll have to figure I tried that out. stealing from you instead and it, it failed. I don't have enough money or something. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need 500 coins. Um, But, okay, let's move on to topic one, which is Epic High's Sleepless in Blank Review. Sleepless in underscore, 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 yes, underscore. it's, it's like I, 10 I, underscores. I, yeah, I don't know exactly how many underscores it is, but I I, I believe that's how you would say it. <laughs> yes. Um... So yeah, we got a new mini album or EP from Epic High, um, which is why Jacob was supposed to be on this episode. Um, obviously, he's the biggest Epic High fan around. In the world. Um, and he doesn't have Blow Note on him. I can guarantee it. I have Blow okay, Note on him. Uh, <laughs> do you? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll get to the first track, which is Sleepless. Um, and I thought this was a really cool, like, melancholy instrumental intro um, I like the mix of like the the in- melancholy instruments and then the computer generated voice, um, just talking about like loneliness and being depressed and sleepless. Um, but I thought it was like really good dichotomy between like having the the very mellow instrumentals and then the computer voice. Like it's kind of the opposite of that type of thing. Um, and then, but yeah, this just really hits the feeling it's going for. This is probably my favorite track on the album. Like, it's it, as stupid as it sounds. Um, mostly just because, uh, like, Epic High has spoken at length about the artists that they were inspired by, um, both domestically and like for like American artists, that sort of thing. And one of their biggest inspirations has been a tribe called Quest. And this intro is one of the most overt like tributes to a tribe called Quest. Um, in the early '90s, they put out an uh, an album called uh, Midnight Marauders, where pretty much almost every one of the tracks had a robot like voice speaking like this, like doing like the intro to like the album, explaining the concept of the album, that sort of thing. So, like, mm. I, I, I was like, I, like a tribe called Quest is pretty much like the first group, the group that got me into hip hop. So to see this type of influence on it uh, won me over immediately. Um, also, just again, like the sort of theming and the sort of nature of this uh, intro track, uh, there's almost sort of again you kind of touched on it, sort of the irony of like the melancholiness of the song, whereas a robot, something like fully devoid of the concept of emotion or like mm-hmm. human emotions, is speaking about like loneliness and being sleepless, that sort of thing. So yeah, again, there's there's a there's a bit of irony in. Um, the way that they approach this intro track where it's it's full of emotion yet and yet the monologue is being delivered by something that's completely devoid of emotion so just sort of the irony yeah. between that was incredible yeah uh jacob's notes were um and just as a warning jacob has a lot of notes for oh guy. of course of course um, jacob's gonna speak surprise, more surprise. than all of us <laughs> yeah um, he said, this is a perfect intro for the album. The robotic voice speaks to you in a way that's very sentimental and almost haunting, like some sort of post-apocalyptic AI computer speaking into the nothingness of the wasteland of the earth. <laughs> he got very poetic with this one. I He's think that sort English of visual, <laughs> huh? yeah. I think that sort of visual I got perfectly fits with this album as it really reflects what one feels when they have all these things swirling around them in their heads, preventing them from sleeping. I love the theme of the album. Sleeplessness is one of the most relatable topics that I feel that like isn't super obvious to cover, and I'm glad Epic <clears throat> High has gone there. Mm-hmm. And like in all honesty, I can't make it through this track without crying. It's like, oh fuck, <laughs> yeah. just or, or just like this into the next <laughs> one, especially. So we can go and we can yeah. go into that. Um, yep. Next is In Seoul featuring Sunwoo Junga. Um, and for this, I thought it had a f- like fantastic instrumental intro. Like the beat's really great, and then it has like the glitchy, slower, melancholy instruments, which match with Sleepless. Um, I think. Mithra and Tablo still have like the perfect tone and flow. Like this is the exact type of hip hop I like listening to, mm. um, which is why Epic High is one of my favorites. 
Um, and I, I think they killed it on this song and the whole album as always. Um, and I really like Sanu Jungha's tone. It's really interesting and like very mature. Yeah. Um, and there's like a little chip tune synth line that accompanies her parts that like really yeah. stood out to me. Um, and then also at the end, the, there's a fantastic string part that accompanies her ad libs. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that part definitely stood out to me as well. Yeah, just speaking on that sort of like synth line that accompanies uh, Sun Wu Jung parts, it's like this really like intricate sort of electric sounding like triplet triplet, like sort of arpeggio yeah. going up. Um, I just thought it was such an interesting uh, mix of basically you've got this like really like old school like boom bat lo fi hip hop type beat, and you're mixing this like straight up like mi- like early 2010s instrumentation type of thing um with that uh mm-hmm. thin triplet it's kind of like the stuff that like kanye kanye was doing in like the 2010s when he made like uh 808s and heartbreaks or some of the stuff that leaked into uh the watch the throne album he did with uh w- with jay-z like that type of like i thought that was such an interesting sort of uh dichotomy between uh the, the instrumentation in that sort of way um Mm-hmm. Again, touching on theming and everything, you've got Sleepless and In Soul, and just the entire t- title of Sleepless and Soul in itself is a uh, double entendre, where literally you're sleepless in the city of Seoul, where, or it's also mm-hmm. meaning like your soul, or like being like restless, yeah. the, the concept of having a restless soul, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I, pe- I feel like uh, Sun Woo Jung Ah was the perfect choice to for the hook on this song. Just her voice is incredibly haunting. Um, I my uh, I'm not really as familiar with her uh, work outside of I know she had like yeah. a feat. she worked with like IU or something like that. Okay. Um, and she wrote uh, twenty my favorite twenty one ballad. Uh, it hurts slow. So she definitely she definitely got that like emo thing going for her. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, just perfect, perfect choice of uh, vocalist for this track. Um, and in all honesty, I could say this without a doubt now, having listened to this album repeatedly uh, over the past week or so, this combination of I f- of Sleepless and In Soul, I feel, would have made for a way more impactful single than Love Drunk, in all honesty. I mean, I'll get into like maybe my, my issues with Love Drunk, but I feel like just this was... I, I felt like they, they should have just gone with this, because it... I, it was the most impactful um, combination of songs in the entire album, and I felt like it would have made such a good music video. I mean, they wouldn't even have yeah. had yeah to change much in all honesty. But I mean, oh, we'll just get to, we'll get to that when I would speak about Love Drunk, I guess. Yeah. Um, Jacob said the intro leads seamlessly into the opening <laughs> instrumental of the song, which again cleanly transitions into a really nice progressive hip hop beat, which is something that I that is definitely familiar for Epic High fans. And is what I was expecting coming into this album. Sun Woo Jung Ah's vocals are amazing on this track. They really fit the tone of the song really well. Really great. And I'm curious to check out her other work. The lyrics deal with the general theme of sleeplessness due to the overwhelming thoughts put upon us by society and our will to succeed to meet those expectations. God damn it, Jacob. Stop making us look stupid. <laughs> well, that's because he actually looked up the lyrics because it's Epic High. That's like the yeah. only thing he looks up lyrics yeah, for. Yeah, I don't like lo- Which I, makes I sense because Tableau. Yeah, I don't fantastic. really look up much of his lyrics, but I can definitely yeah. to understand. You, you don't need to understand the Korean to sort of gauge meaning, at least when it comes to tableau. That's a specialty. Yeah. Well, and I know well you were talking about how like it matches like sleepless in soul, like as the double entendre or whatever, the double meaning. Um, but I think in this song uh, he is where he says he says he feels like he's back in Map of the Soul era. Map the Soul like, era, oh beautiful, yeah, beautiful throwback. It's and, like. This is the kind and of stuff. This does fit that type of music. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff like that, that he emo, did. Just hip hop, emo, like just like lo-fi type stuff. Like, yeah, it definitely yeah. feels like a throwback to that. So, mm-hmm. um, that was almost my English lyrics, but I had to go with weird GWS <laughs> and Bible verse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Next is Love Drunk featuring Crush, which is the single of the album. Um, and for me, uh, Crush is just the king of features. Um, he's on everything, um, and I think he's fantastic. Uh, I thought there was a great opening for it with him in the piano. Um, and then I really like the mix between like his soft singing and harmonies, and then Tablo's like angry rapping. Um, like that worked really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was 
it, it, it's funny because it's, they're definitely inspired by Epic High, but it, it reminded me of uh, like the Stray Kids stuff with oh, like Chong Bin definitely. doing angry rapping and then like the, the, some of the singing being a lot more I softer. swear, it, um, if, if Chong... Like voices. If, if Chong Bin isn't on like a Born Hater Part 3, I will be... I will be... <laughs> I will be incensed. Yeah, now that they're not under YG, they could have a... Yeah, they could, uh, they could also, put anyone. Actually, I, f- I, mean, no, I, was Simon D I forgot was, about this. They weren't even... They, not Go everyone on. that was on the on Born Hater was even under uh Yeah. Uh under uh, um, YG or anything, so Yeah. But wasn't Sugar on this album, but where I don't understand like uh, I remember them talking about him. Being, next song, next song. Did next he song. just help it's produce. next song? Okay. Yeah. It's just cause oh he produced that, okay. Because I was gonna say he didn't feature, like they didn't actually mention his name anywhere. So I wasn't sure where where he ended up being. Okay. Um but yeah, for the song, like I said, the mix was great. Um I think string and piano based like pop and hip hop I've talked about a lot has always been like my favorite types of songs. Um and this is like a perfect example of it. Mm-hmm. Um and then for the music video, it's really aesthetic. Uh but why is Ayu doing martial arts with magical powers? I don't very know. Confused. I don't I <laughs> It looks I've, really pretty, but well, it was I, very confusing. I, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's Ayu and Jin Soyeon, who is I believe an actress, doing like kung fu shit. <laughs> like, that's all I yeah. can explain. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, and I guess that might be one of my uh, first issues. Not 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 Ayu and Jin Soyeon, but um, I'd say like the actual music video, like the mixing of it, where literally I could I couldn't even hear the song because like the little whoosh 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 of them yeah, doing like the cro- effects, like yeah. kung fu shit was like. I could barely hear the song, so I feel like that, yeah, that was an oversight on their part, if anything. Like, if you're listening to this album for the first time, I suggest actually going to listen to Love Drunk, like, the song first before you go watch the music, because the music video is great. Like, I I enjoy the music video, but yeah, it's it's, it's hard to hear the song or hard to contextualize it uh, in terms of the music video, because all you're going to be hearing is just, like, awesome kung fu noises, basically, the whole time. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, that's what I did. I listened to the album on Spotify, and then I went yeah. back to watch a music video. Yeah. Um, I, I'm in a weird spot with this song. Cause I, I mentioned before, I felt like um, Sleepless in Soul would have been a better um, single. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe just because I feel like with this, because I'm, I'm probably one of the biggest Crush fans out of all of us. And, and maybe in that case, that were, my expectations might have been a bit too high for a friggin' epic high and crush collaboration where it kind of just it, it kind of felt like it, it hit par if that makes any yeah, sense like it, it like i feel like out, yeah it didn't blow me away necessarily it definitely it just feels like a crush song and that's not necessarily that's never a bad thing in all honesty it just yeah. i felt like they could have brought something or uh, maybe i was expecting a lot more from a collaboration this significant or incredible between uh two like artists that i've been really big fans of for the longest time now especially crush so i mean yeah this is it's it, it's your it's your pretty standard crush feature where he he does like he almost does like 80 percent of the song <laughs> in all honesty but i mean that's that's crush i like that part about crush where he, he yeah. definitely he definitely does uh steal the show on a lot of the songs despite being a feature i mean it's just still an enjoyable song again i'm not hating on it too much it's just yeah i mean your expectations were really yeah, high. Yeah, your expectations were a bit high, and I feel like I, get, I still, even if I enjoyed it more, I still feel like Sleepless, the combination of Sleepless and Soul would have just been a better uh, a better representation of the album, in all honesty. Yeah. Yeah, so th- that's that's ultimately how I felt about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob said, as previously with his feature on the last album, Crush's vocals on the hook really pair well with Tablo's rap. The presence of strings and pianos is something that I always love to hear on Epic High's tracks. There isn't nearly as much as there should be present in modern hip-hop these days, which I agree with. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only does Epic High please me with their rap and lyrics, but on a production level as well. The songs sound as beautiful as even some of the best ballads. Um, the lyrics of the song reflect another element that contributes to the sleepnessness, and it's the experience of, as the title suggests, being love drunk. It mm-hmm. deals with themes of trying to forgive and forget someone the speaker was once in love with. Yeah, and th- um, apparently that's like the whole relation to like the, I don't know, kung fu. Like they're literally fighting the, over like the relationship or stuff. I don't know. Something I don't know. Like, that. like Ayu walked into her house and there was like a dead bird and like freaked out and then they started fighting and then Ayu kills her and then Damn. starts getting drunk and 
It, it was weird. But dang, I was like, go straight watch up, it. Yeah, go watch it. Like she's straight up like Bruce Lee, like like nin, like the like the tabby shoes and everything. Like oh, yeah, it was, yeah. it's really cool. Traditional martial artist mm. outfits. Yep. Uh, next, we have Eternal Sunshine um, of the Spotless Mind. Like, <laughs> not quite. Um, and like Andrew said, so this is the one that was produced by Shaga, uh from BTS, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, for me, uh, the funk beat to the song is just fantastic. Um, it stood out instantly, and I loved it. Um, and I really like. So I this actually like credit to Sugar because I think the production of the song is really cool. Oh, um, one of his best. Like the. Like, I really love the layered vocals and, like, different volumes they use throughout the song. It gives the impression that there's more members of Epic High when there's only two of them. Two of them, yeah. Because there's, like, two or three different tableau parts being layered and yeah uh, throughout the song and, like, two or three Mithra parts. So, like, it was a really cool production and definitely stood out to me. Yeah, that's another thing I had to just note or of is just... Suga, Suga is like, he's not just a name, he's an actual good producer. Uh, hopefully this mm-hmm. time he won't be bar- barred from collaborating with Epic High because of stupid dating scandal. <laughs> like, that, that's why he can't work with Suran anymore, is because everyone, um, I was like, oh my god, he's dating Suran, how dare you, sort of like nonsense like that. So, um, I hope hopefully she'll work with her again, but I mean, this stuff is just... You could you you definitely tell that like with with some of like the outro tracks that BTS does or like some of, like the hip hop like old school hip hop style tracks that BTS does, you could tell mm-hmm. that they all all of them like uh, looked up to Epic High, and um, it, it's awesome yeah. to see Sugar like just do this perfectly. He knows how to tailor um, production for um, whatever artist he's working for, whether it be himself, whether it be uh, Sudan, whether it be Epic High in this case. Um, Obviously, I'm gonna. I'm a huge sucker for anything. Then it, it's literally like the opening sound effect of this. It's literally someone dropping like a set tape into like the player yeah. and everything, and like you hear like the sort of like wind up lo-fi type of thing. I love how they bring that um, pitched up voice back towards the end of the song. I I, I yeah. hate when they like only just leave that for the intro and they never bring it back. But that's a cool sort of detail. Also, probably my favorite Mythra verse on the entire album. On this, he killed it. In all honesty, so yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Jacob said, I really love the way the track transitions from its initial lo-fi vibe into the normal high-fidelity audio quality that's consistent through the rest of the track. The production as well as rap style really reminds me of a track you'd find on Epic High Records from 10 plus years ago, and I really think that's the biggest charm of this song for me. The title is a reference to a really great film, which you made a joke about, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I recommend, if you haven't seen it, the lyrics continue the common themes of insomnia and anxiety. And I mean, I Which think that's I've just. I've never actually seen that movie. Yeah, so. I, I've, I, I've, I watched my sister and her boyfriend watch it, but I mean, I don't understand it what? entirely. <laughs> or like, or, I will. Are they? I was in the same room as them while they were they were watching but it on like really the TV. I was. All I know is it's just like an emo Jim Carrey movie. <laughs> it's about like yeah. erasing, yeah, or so, or actually, or no, 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 not 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 that one. Um, I'm thinking of. No, that is that is the show of Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah, where you're just literally erasing people from your memories and that sort of thing, like some really creepy mm. uh, dystopian shit. But, um, and just to touch up on another thing, like Jacob like noted like about how it sounds like stuff that Epic High was putting out like ten plus years ago. I think that's just a, another one of Epic High's just selling points and charms is that they're they're timeless essentially. <laughs> they're timeless. Like the the music that they make now is as relevant and uh, as modern sounding as it was. Just like back then so that's just another just attribution to the how great this group is mm. yeah uh next we have no different featuring yuna not snsd's yuna not an snsd's yuna, yuna. Or, or or ff final fantasy 10's yuna even though it's about the same um i thought like at the beginning there was a great use of the bass drum to mirror heartbeat um that was really cool and then I really like the minimalist instrumentals um, and the use of Yuna singing more as a, an instrument um, by like modifying it and adding like that Doppler effect. Mm. Um, they like use like before when she's not even singing like while they're rapping, she's still there mm. as mm. part of the instrumentals almost. Yeah. Um, and I thought her voice was fantastic. It fits really well in this type of song and like crushes, it contrasts with Epic High's rapping style like perfectly. Mm. Um, so yeah, the song was really, really good. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, 
Yuna. God, when did she first break out? Like 2010, 2011? Um, like it's, I first heard of Yuna's music, um, when I went to MTV Iggy for 21. <laughs> so yeah, MTV had this whole thing where they're like, oh, it's showcasing international, um, musicians and that sort of thing. I believe if I remember correctly, uh, she's from Malaysia. Uh, she wears like yeah, a headdress sort of right thing. Now. Yeah. So she... Like, the first second I heard her, I was in love with her voice. Like, the first thing I heard from her was a cover of uh, Come As You Are by Nirvana. Just like this... And she completely changed the song entirely. It was incredible. Um, Like, I've been a big fan of her music before I even just, like, got serious about... Or this serious about K-pop. So to see her sort of, like, come full circle and uh, do a collaboration with someone as big as Epic High, I was... This is probably it's a front runner for one of my favorite collabs of the entire year in all honesty i'm just super happy to see you know getting this sort of recognition uh, and she she completely steals the show with this hook like again I, i'm glad that i hope more people look into her music because she's done her career path has just been insane just like blowing up um like her first american song was with she produced by pharrell she's done stuff with like usher um, yeah, it's that her debut what? was with Usher. Yeah, just like all these like really big name artists. She's worked with like Janae Aiko, um, like just really big names. And Epic High is just getting added to that incredibly uh, prestigious list. Um, again, and uh, before I forget completely forget about like the Epic High element of this, um, freaking Tabo again. His lyrics lyrics are just a master class. Literally, just gonna quote it straight up. He's like, "I might not be the one." Could you settle for half? Just like even stupid like <laughs> like quips like that are just like yeah. it's so tablo. <laughs> it yeah, fits a song. 100%. It fits a song so perfectly. Like only only he who knows how to do this kind of stuff. So this yeah, this is a front runner for my favorite of uh the album tracks. Like yeah, it, it, it's just a, it's a perfect collaboration for me. Uh Jacob said, I absolutely love this song. I think it's my favorite on the album. Maybe it's because of the fact that it's in my native language that I can connect to it so well, but I feel like Tablo's lyrical genius is especially evident in songs like these. Simple lyrics that still have several layers to them. The first few times you listen, you unravel more and more within the meaning of the song, even though the gist of it is obvious. Yuna's vocals really shine especially... Usually, really shine especially. She has so much soul and passion in her voice. After listening to the song, I went and checked out her solo stuff, which I'd actually recommend you check out. Mm-hmm. Yep, I second Uh, that, definitely. Go check out all of her albums. She's great. Uh, Next, we have Rain Again Tomorrow. Um, And this was... This is definitely um, getting into more modern Epic High as opposed to the rest of the album was more um, like their old school stuff. Um, Like the glitchy vocals as instruments gives the song more of like an indie pop vibe than like a hip hop song. Um, it's, so it's, it's like much more experimental poppy than the rest of the songs in the album. Um, but I like it for that. I, I like their experimental side too. Um, as much as I love their original style and their mm-hmm. like more emo hip hop, like I like when they do mix it up with things like this. Um, and as usual, their rapping's fantastic too. So again, Tablo, the master lyricist, literally saying freaking beats to relax and study to <laughs> yeah. you know the, you know that is right the chill beats to relax and study to youtube thing yeah, yeah. yeah basically just making references to that um <laughs> so that, that literally made me laugh the first time i heard it uh so it's definitely a different sort of style compared to whatever every everything else on this um at first i didn't like it as much just because i felt the chorus just was a tad repetitive but i completely forgave it for the way it transitioned into the next song which we'll get to but i mean yeah that's definitely the redeeming element of it just like again that it's a perfect transition between this and the last song much in the same way that sleepless and in soul had excellent transitions uh between one another Mm mm-hmm uh, Jacob said, in contrast with Eternal Sunshine, the song reminded me more of Epic High's more recent sound. This track would feel right at home on We've Done Something Wonderful, yep. which is one of their best albums to date. The beat gives me similar vibes to Bleed, which was the standout track of the album for me. The laid back rap style in the song was really effective as well. And finally, we have Lullaby for a Cat. And like you mentioned, um, it continues the end of the last song. 
um, becomes the beginning of the song. And this is more of an in, an outro. Um, and it just leads into a short rap with a really, really amazing string solo. Oh, um, it's so it was, good. It was fantastic. A great way to end the album. Um, So, literally, whenever I go into Epic High albums, um, like, I guess, again, it they're probably one of the few groups that still understand or utilize the concept of an album where it's supposed to be meant it's supposed to listen you're supposed to listen to it in its entirety as opposed to just a smattering of singles and b-sides sort of things and just the way that these rain again tomorrow and lullaby for a cat book and the way that they open with sleepless and in soul it's 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 perfect um and Lullaby for a Cat has got that same lo-fi type of thing that Sleepless has. You, you touched on that string instrumental. Um, again, just got to add that piano part to it as well. Just overall, just a great way to end. It literally straight up sounds like a lullaby, so hopefully Tavo can finally go to sleep now. <laughs> Jesus Christ, if he hasn't slept. Yeah. He hasn't slept working on this. How's he supposed to go on tour? Um, yeah. yeah, just it's, it, it was a perfect way to end this album, honestly. Um, I'm it, uh, and just the way, it, actually, if you listen to it on loop, just the way that it perfectly loops right back into Sleepless is just, again, they just put so much thought into arrangement, into just like how everything flows into one, one another. And it's unmatched. It's unmatched in Korean music, in my in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we will get, or well, and Jacob's, Jacob's notes, sorry, uh, he said the chill vibe of the song is a perfect closer to the amaz- this amazing album. It's the kind of music you could study your sleep to, which I think is really fitting on an album where the main theme is that of being sleepless. On a side note, people on Twitter have been playing this song to their cats and they are actually being put to sleep by it. Hey. Tavo's mind was Tavo's <laughs> mind was blown. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um so we'll get to ratings. Um and for me, uh I give it a ten out of ten. Um I thought every song on the album was fantastic. Uh, I thought the music video was very aesthetic, even if I didn't understand what was going on. Um, the cover art is really cool, um, and there's not obviously there's no choreography or styling to worry about. Um, so yeah, I thought it was perfect. Uh, I'm g- probably gonna be on the low end of everyone knowing Jacob, which <laughs> he's gonna give. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I split up my um, my album or my music score. Uh, between single and album. So for single, I gave 2.5 points. Um, again, I, it, it's probably just because I was expecting more of it. It was still enjoyable. But in retrospect, again, it's it probably ended up being one of the least enjoyable. And that, that's that's that, that's like saying like... That's, that, that's not saying much with this album because I feel like I enjoyed everything from top to bottom. But it would... I feel like mm-hmm. as, for, as a single, it was kind of the weakest of the tracks in that retrospect. Uh, and it, in contrast, I gave uh, a perfect three point five to the album because I felt like every everything uh, on the everything in terms of album tracks was amazing. Just again, I've, as much as I've uh, gone on about like the the book ending and the the transitions between the songs, just it's it's textbook epic. I and they've they overall they just, they never disappoint. Um, mm-hmm. Concept score, I'd give it two out of three of partially just because I felt like, again, the mixing could have been better. So, like, I feel like you can get across the, ooh, cool kung fu fighting scene type thing without just intermixing too much of the uh, the sound effects. Sound also, effects. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I... I I guess it is it, it's kind of just like I don't know maybe I'm just getting more used to like Epic High's weird music videos but I mean it's not as like groundbreaking as um I don't know even some of like the stuff that they did for uh like like for the I think for the um Sekai no Oadi collaboration I they either got like a fan to do like an animated music video or something like that I mean like I feel like they they've made more creative music videos than this and I mean I'm not complaining because it's IU but I feel like yeah they, they could have bit they could have done a bit more and also with um we've done something wonderful they did multiple music I believe they did a few music videos or yeah yeah I think they did it two or three yeah they did but a that few. was a full album yeah, that was a fall album. So I mean, maybe one or two would have uh, bumped that score up, but so that'll total out to an eight out of ten. So, uh, no surprise, Jacob gave it a ten out of ten. <clears throat> yep. No, no additional wording. Uh, Cooper's notes were. 
The intro immediately set the mood for the album, really relatable lyrics, Love Drunk didn't leave much of an impact on me, which I was hoping it would since it was a crush feature. Uh, the MV is really beautiful and featuring IU get it bonus points. No Different is easily my favorite track on the album. I love Yuna's voice and the whole song has a really unique vibe to it. Uh, Rain Again Tomorrow and Lullaby for a Cat I thought were just one big song because the transition was so smooth. Really love both of these songs. Tablo's lyricism never fails to astound me. Uh, Cooper gives it a 6.5 out of 7 for music, a 2.5 out of 3 for concept, giving it a grand total of 9 out of 10. So, we do the math. Uh, I'm going to get... be 9, 9, 9, 10. Yeah, so. 9, 9, 9. Oh, I give it an 8. So, 9... Yeah, so if you take one of my points, give it to you. <laughs> three nines and a 10. Okay, so, so then it'll just average like nine, what? Nine point two five. Yeah, so, so. nine point five. <laughs> nine point five. Okay, so of course this is gonna get a a shiny and um, definitely yep, definitely. Def, definitely worthy of the ra- our truly Devak uh, awards or like actual like shinies have been more rare, but I feel like every single album that's gotten it has definitely deserved it so far. So yeah, this is mm. gonna be this is gonna be there in in the end of the year in terms of front runners for. Uh, our various album of the year awards. So let us know what your thoughts are on Epic High's Sleepless in underscores. Uh, yes. What, your, what were your favorite songs? Did you enjoy the music video? Should I, you have gotten an actual feature instead of just showing up in the music video? I felt I, I yes, wish I, she should have. Yeah, she should have. Also, <laughs> Yoonha, the Korean singer should have also gotten another feature because <laughs> her song, because umbrella is amazing mm-hmm. and she needs more Epic High features and more yep. recognition in general. Uh, let us know in the comments below. According to the Korean translation of the title, apparently it's supposed to be "One day I grew horns on my head." I shit you not. That's the actual. What, tra- really? <laughs> that's the translate. Your crown. I noticed is the that English the title. Korean name was really long. Yeah, um, but yeah. I, di- I didn't bother looking into it. <laughs> yeah, I just.